Well, it's still an uphill climb for Ben. Under the gun this time around, but with considerably more chips. Yeah, Ben, just over five big blinds to start this hand. I think a lot of people would just instantly go all in when they see an ace and they have five big blinds. Ben, though, the consummate professional, incredibly disciplined fold there. Just knowing the math and knowing that even though he's a very short stack, ace three offsuit with all these players behind him is just not good enough, and he's patient enough to, uh, to wait it out and see if he can get a better situation. Jake Schindler, meanwhile, will open the action with a raise to 22,000. The 25-year-old pro calls Hollywood, Florida home. You may recognize that town. Also home to Jason Mercier, a familiar name here on the tour. This is Jake's first Alpha 8 appearance, and he is going to be heads up in position against Dan Coleman, the intimidating professional who has Queen Jack suited and has flopped a flush draw. Two kings and a five with a couple of clubs. Dan checks it. Jake seizing the opportunity to fire a continuation bet of 21,000. I might have actually checked back here if I were Jake with Queen 10. It's got some showdown value and not too much equity, but he decides to continuation bet Dan not going anywhere, of course, with his flush draw. Four of hearts a blank to both players, and Coleman, who has over 22.8 million in live tournament earnings, casually checks it over to Jake, who has 3.7 million in live tournament earnings of his own, and checks back. Jake doesn't improve and decides not to go for it again. Now the six of hearts on the river. I think Dan has two options here. He can check and hope queen high is good, or he can just try to bluff with it. Sure. Um, he decides to check. And Jake looks like he sees this up as an opportunity to try to bet. Knows that he can't win in showdown, or assumes he can't win in showdown, that Dan either has a hand like ace high or maybe a five, maybe pocket threes. But what is Jake representing here? I mean, the line is so suspect. I mean, he could have two sevens maybe. I mean, I, don't, I think he would probably bet the turn with two sevens. He could have rivered a six. It's a little bit suspicious of a bet, but it's tough for Dan to just to call with queen high. Try telling that to Dan Coleman. He casually deposits 42,000 in the middle wow. and shows Queen Jack over Queen 10. That's playing the game. Yeah, I mean, that, that's going to look very odd to some people that he just called with Queen High. But at the end of the day, what Dan's hand is, is it's a bluff catcher. It's not too different from Ace Queen or from, uh, you know, 5 4. He knows that he beats almost all or all of Jake's bluffs. If Jake had Ace High or a pair, he probably wouldn't feel the need to bluff. So his hand, you know, if he's right that Jake's bluffing, he'll be able to call and win. It looks a little strange, um, and sometimes he'll look silly because Jake is actually value betting um, or m potentially bluffing with a worse hand. But that's one of the things that makes Dan so dangerous. He's willing to trust his instincts and make a play that maybe most people wouldn't.